If you want news and rumors that appeal, welcome to the dusty wheel. If you want news and rumors that appeal, welcome to the dusty wheel. If you want news and rumors that appeal, welcome to the dusty wheel. If you want news and rumors that appear. Hey, welcome back to the Dusty Wheel. I'm your host, the Innkeeper, and this is our live call and talk show all about the Wheel of Time. Now, tonight is a special episode. It's our first The Wheel of Time on Amazon Prime debate. But before I bring in my participants of that debate, I want to remind you all that we're actually just about a little less than 900 subscribers before that special 10K episode where that man off screen. You all know Ms. Taylor will be hosting his first The Dusty Wheel show. I can't wait until that moment where I get to be the guest. We'll actually have plenty of guests that tonight. It'll be a lot of fun. Looking forward to getting there. So if you happen to be here for the first time, we'd love to have you as a subscriber. Share with your friends. And uh, yeah, that, that'll happen here in the next little bit, and we'll do that special episode. But that's not tonight. what tonight's about. Tonight is about debating the Wheel of Time. A better debate than what's happening, let's be honest, tomorrow. So I'm glad you're all here, and I hope you enjoy this. Now, without further ado, let me welcome our debate participants. Welcome, everyone, Team Nerbless and Team Tarvalon Witches. How's everybody doing tonight? Awesome. <laughs> yes. I still, I always love that wave. This is the best moment of my. It's the best moment of every live show. <laughs> Nabless, it's awesome to have you here. Recap said I. Thank you again for making the time. Jess, it's been too long since I've seen your face here. And, so good to be here. And Lesbian Nerdy, it's awesome to see you or see your head, your disembodied head once again. So now uh, tonight, we've actually broken this down into two teams. So like I said, we have Team Nerbless, which is Nabless and Lesbian Nerdy. And then we have Team Tarvalon, which is, which is Jess, the Omerlin Seat of the White Tower Podcast, and Rikappa Sedai. This is how this is going to work. And let's, we'll jump into the first question. Each team is going to have the option of having one speaker speak to a question that I pose them. Those individuals will speak for two minutes each. Yes, they will be muted if they go over those two minutes. And then they'll each get a one-minute rebuttal. Then we'll bring everybody back in. 
and the two team members who didn't get to speak will have just about 30 seconds to explain why their team member was right and give some final thoughts. And then we're gonna turn to you, the live audience, here in live chat with us on YouTube, and you're going to vote who won that round. Now, this isn't really about the winners, except the winner team is going to get a little swag. So I guess it's a little bit about winning tonight. <laughs> so that being said, if there's no questions uh, before we jump in, let's, let's break it down. Let's get to our first topic and question. So tonight, the first category is Wheel of Time Plots. It'll be our first two questions about Wheel of Time Plots. And our first two participants for, are going to be for Team Nerbless, Nabless, and then for Team Tarvalon Witches, we're going to have Rakapa Sedai speak to us. This is the, the topic and the question they were given. Helena Westerman is rumored to be playing a character named Lila Ibarra. Fans have speculated as to what this might mean. In fact, I want to say back in February, we actually had one website out there that claimed that Lila Ibarra would be Perrin's wife and accidentally killed by Perrin during the Trolloc attack on Edmonds Field. So the question I pose to both of these individuals is why is this the right or the wrong change to the Wheel of Time plot? So let's start with you, Nablus. Why is this the right change? Well, I'm going to start by thanking you for having me here, Matt. Um, this is a very serious debate topic. Um, I want to start off also by saying that everything Recapa said I says is fake news. <laughs> so, um, so I know that this is stacked against me because this question is uh, a difficult one. But let me explain why it makes sense to have Rand or uh, no, Rand Perrin kill his wife, huh, his wife that we didn't even know he had. Um, if we have to make that work, if that's if that's truly direction that they're going to go with the show, then I, I think the first thing that we really need to address is Perrin doesn't have much of a backstory in the books. Okay, like we don't see much of his family. And later on, spoilers, uh, he ends up having his family killed. Um, that is less impactful than it probably should be in The Shadow Rising simply because we don't get to actually meet those family members. Um, and so I think introducing parents' family earlier and potentially a spouse earlier uh, builds bonds with Perrin. It, it helps them develop him more as a character. Um, if we give him a backstory and it sets up a little bit. So again, let's take this for a second. If they did say that they were going to have him accidentally kill Layla Barra, who ends up being his wife. And again, that is unconfirmed. But if that is indeed uh, the what direction that they go, um, that could also set up the explanations of why he's so careful with things, why he's so gentle, why he wants to think things through, because the time that he was impulsive uh, was the time that he ended up hurting his wife or that he did something. And so it sets up a little bit of his character if they do want to go that direction, which, again, is unconfirmed. But uh, any case, Recapa Sedai, fake news. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Nablus, for your answer there. Appreciate that. Uh, and now, yeah, let's let's hear from Recapa Sedai as to why this is the wrong change or why this would be the wrong change to the Wheel of Time plot for the TV show. I'm so glad you asked. So. We should absolutely not be seeing Perrin kill his wife at the beginning of the Wheel of Time. There are a couple of reasons, but I think first and foremost, we do not be needing to add, we don't need to add a wife for Perrin just so that we can kill her off in service of his story. Oh, can you still see me? Yeah, we can go ahead. Okay, You're never good. mind. I'm a mess. Anyway. Um, we do not need to be adding a wife for Perrin just to kill her to help Perrin's story. That is a messed up trope that we should not be falling into. And I really hope we will not be seeing it for that reason. But there are other reasons. Perrin is the last character in the Wheel of Time who I want to see dealing with the fact that he killed his wife. Because as it is, Perrin's whole thing to an annoying extent is that he doesn't want to assume his role. He doesn't want to get people hurt. He's afraid of the responsibility. And the last thing we need on top of all of that is for him to be like, I also killed my wife. I'm also afraid to be a leader because I get people killed. Like, we don't need more of that. That is not what I like in Perrin's story. I want more. Also, for Perrin to be married at the beginning of the story, we are going to lose an element of this being a coming of age story. There is something really nice about them 
not being married at the beginning and learning what relationships and what marriage are later on. But that's the least of the reasons we should not be adding wives just to kill them. Absolutely not. No. I yield my time. <laughs> Sounds good. So I mean, you, you've heard the initial uh, positions that both these individuals have taken. Nabless, I want to give you one minute as a rebuttal to what you just heard from Recapa. Go ahead. Again, thank you. Thank you, Matt. And if this was a real debate and I had an actual real rebuttal to that comment, I would do that. But since it's, you know, this is the way <laughs> debates are done now. I think that Recapa Sadai is playing both sides here because Recapa just released a video about Fail. And so she, <laughs> she is clearly biased towards Fail and doesn't want Perrin to have a spouse. And so if you watch that video, uh, you'll see that uh, Fail, um, yeah, I, re I, I yield my time. Recapa's biased. Fake news. <laughs> Recapa's biased. Okay, thank you for that rebuttal. Uh, Recapa, uh, you have one minute. Um, well, about Fail, so assuming, like, we, we don't really know what they're going to do, right? This is kind of assuming that Fail is still going to come into the picture later on, and it's going to change that. Like, there is something about that relationship growing, and for parents to already be married at the beginning, we're not going to get to experience parent and Fayil learning what it means to be married. And that's maybe the best thing we get from their relationship is that dynamic. Um, anyway, I really hope it doesn't happen. I don't want to see parent killing his wife. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see parent dealing with that. No. Okay. Well, thank you very much for you both uh, participating in this one. Now we're going to, uh, we're going to bring everyone back from... Uh, back from the uh, from being hidden away while the two participants uh, debated this. And we're going to give their team members a chance with 30 seconds left to give a final thought on this before we have all of our participants here in chat vote on who won this particular round. So why don't we begin with you, uh, Jess. Why is Recapa right that this is the wrong decision? Um, <clears throat> thank you, Matt. Uh, Recapa is right because... Um, I think largely maybe the second biggest thing is losing the relationship with Fail because if this man has killed his wife, he's not going to be looking for another relationship. He's going to be freaking traumatized. That's just, it's not going to happen. And if it does, it will be completely unrealistic. And also I would just like to point out once again, that the trope of killing a woman to further the uh, the story of a male character, it's tired, and I expect better. Okay, so thank you for that, for that final note. And so then I want to turn it over to Lesbian Nerdy. Why was Nablus correct that this is actually the right decision for them to make? Well, uh, first of all, thank you very much, Matt, for hosting this debate. I just want to say that the Dusty Wheel is the best tavern in the Westlands. <laughs> um, but uh, to take a stance on this opinion that is very clearly my opinion and not something enforced on me by the format of this debate, um, this is absolutely the right choice because one of the things that people get frustrated with in Perrin's storyline later on is how dark he goes, how emo he goes. He just he falls into a depression for and it pro. Sorry, Jen, that was, uh, you, you had your 30 seconds there. <laughs> Apologies, had to mute you there. <laughs> so um, really? that was it. <laughs> Those were all of the opinions you get to hear about round one. Thank all four of you for actually uh, debating that topic. Uh, and now I want to turn to those of you that are here watching this in chat. So if you're watching this from Twitter, Facebook, and you want to come over and actually be part of the vote, just go to YouTube, look up the Dusty Wheel, come into here chat. We'd love to hear your opinions. But let's vote on round one. Taylor, throw the vote out there. The way you're going to vote is you're going to use, once you see this, um, N for Nerbless and W for Witches. So it's exclamation point vote and then N or W. And that's how you will vote on this. Uh, and you'll see that show up in chat. So just remember, go ahead and start voting on that now. And Taylor will put another reminder. It is exclamation point vote. And then N for Nerbless, you thought it was the right decision. That was team Nerbless. Or W, you think that was the wrong decision. And uh, yeah, we'll see who ends up. Um, <laughs> I like how Nabless is already voting for himself. But you did vote the incorrect way, so that won't count Nabless. Um, but yes, uh, I... <laughs> 
Just remember to use exclamation point vote with space and then N if you believe that it was the right change or would be the right change if this is the way that Rafe and his team have gone. Or W if you believe this would be the wrong kind of change to make to the Wheel of Time plot when it comes to the show. So I'm seeing everybody uh, get, jump in here and vote. You'll be able to continue voting here. We probably won't shut off the vote here until the next round ends and we'll see who won this one and then we'll jump to voting for the next round. So uh, that being said, let's jump to the second round here. So our second category is still with the Wheel of Time plots. And in this one, we have participating for us in the from Team Tarvalon Witches, we have the Amarlin seat, Jess. And we have from Team Nerbless, Lesby Nerdy. They are going to now debate the following question. We've been told that Rand's romance with Min, Avienda, and Elaine will not remain close to what we see in the books. Additionally, Rafe, in regards to this relationship, said he's much more interested in polyamory than polygamy. Now, the question for both of you is, why is this the right or wrong change to make for the TV series? And up first, we'll have Jess. Jess, why is this the right change to make for the Wheel of Time TV series? This is the right change, Matt, because polygamy is creepy. Okay? Polygamy is one man with multiple wives. We've got power dynamic issues. We have got consent issues. There's all kinds of shit that goes along with that. We don't want it. It's bad. It's real bad. What we want is polyamory. What we want is an ethical, equitable, non-monogamous relationship between these people. And this is what Rafe has talked about. He said he's open to the idea of polyamory. It's much more interesting. So here's what I'm talking about. And as far as I'm considered, Elaine, as I'm concerned, Elaine and Avienda, it's already canon. Like they're already girlfriends. Okay. So what we're looking at is multiple people in one relationship, all involved in a, uh, in a consensual relationship with each other. Um, it's healthier. It's much more progressive. It's not creepy. Altogether, I think it's a much better way to go. And that's uh, my time. I see. Okay. Thank you very much. Just appreciate it. So uh, now, as far as uh, this being the wrong decision, Lesbian Nerdy, why would this be the wrong decision to make for the Wheel of Time plot as far as the TV series is concerned? Okay. Well, uh, let me start off just by saying I am not opposed to polyamory at all. And as a queer person, I am really hoping for some more positive, you know, queer representation in the show. And specifically as a lesbian, I would love to see some lady on lady loving in the show. My objection to making this change is that for one, if this is the main way of adding a positive queer lady relationship in the show, it will take a lot to not make the polyamorous part, the lady on lady loving part, not seem like a lesser relationship, less real compared to the relationship with Rand because Rand is the protagonist. He's literally the most important person in the world. So any relationship with him is always gonna feel like it takes precedence. And add to this, I don't think that making the relationship a poly one does anything to remove the, the male gazy wish fulfillment aspect of this relationship. I, as a queer woman, I can tell you that there are plenty of men out there who would love it if their girlfriends or female partners, whatever, were to have sex with other women. I have actually been approached for this. It's gross. Straight men often just don't see sex and relationships between women as real because, you know, lack of a specific body part. And so adding this aspect to the somewhat already male gazy relationship would just serve to make it even more uh, voyeuristic. And uh, just finally, I will say that in popular culture, polyamory is almost always represented as a relationship with one man and multiple women. And this change would simply fall into this already kind of problematic pattern of polyamory being mostly shown as polygamy with benefits. So if this is a change in the show, I would I would also just really want to see a significant, important polyamorous relationship that involves more than one man. I yield my last five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Excellently done. Uh, polygamy with benefits. That was going to stick with me for a while. Okay, so I'm going to hear rebuttals now. Uh, and We'll go to you, Jess. You've heard uh, Lesbian Nerdy's argument here. What is your rebuttal to that? Well, this is going to be hard. 
because she convinced me. But what I will <laughs> say is with regard to making the female relationship um, secondary to the male female relationships, let's also bear in mind that if they stay true to the way this goes down in the story, Elaine and Avienda have sex with Rand exactly once. They don't actually really have a relationship with him. They don't spend Avienda any time with him. You know, oh. I'm sorry? Twice, Avienda. Oh, twice. Okay. My bad. So still, two times banging does not a relationship make. Yeah. So, you know, I think from that standpoint, perhaps the, the sort of geographical separation um, of them, you know, they're still his baby mama, but it's, not maybe quite as okay yeah thank you very much appreciate that jess uh, and now to you uh lesbian Eddie. what is your rebuttal to uh jess's points uh well my main rebuttal actually is to the point that i've heard a lot of people say that they felt that Ab avienda and elaine were a couple in the books and quite honestly i never saw this and i i am a lesbian i am always looking out for subtext like yeah, you know what I mean. We all, that's what we do. We just look for subtext. And it, that the first sister ceremony was just so obviously their sisters. And so the idea of like going through a birth and simulating becoming blood sisters and then extrapolating a romantic sexual relationship from that, well, I just never did it. And the idea of it still kind of skeeves me, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> I, they could remove that from the show but I don't see it as canon and I'll, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you both. Uh, two times a banging does not a relationship make will also <laughs> stick with me. Thank you both for this uh, wonderful, I love this one. So let's bring everybody back into this. Uh, let's uh, bring all, all four of our participants and let's hear from your two teammates. Uh, and maybe let's start with you, Nablus. Uh, why was Lesbian Nerdy right in this? I don't think I can say anything that Jenny didn't already say correctly. I mean, I feel like she killed that. I don't feel like I have anything to add to that other than um, I think she's correct. And yeah, I'm not going to add anything to that. I can't top it. So. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. Now let's, let's go on to Recapa. Said I, any final thoughts? Why was Jess correct? Um, yes. Uh, I, Jess was absolutely correct. Correct. That was fierce. And I would add Rand is the dragon reborn. So when you give Rand three wives in a polygamous arrangement, it's going to feel objectifying to me. I don't see a way around that because he's the only character we're doing this with and he's the best, he's the hero. Um, I think that's objectifying. I think that the girls deserve better. Oh, 10 seconds. I think the girls deserve better. I think that anything less is cheating them. And I think anything less is objectifying them as Okay, so thank you very much for Kappa. Appreciate that. So that is the end of a round two debate. Uh, we now let's see before we have you vote there in chat. Let's see the winner of our first debate. Taylor, you can go ahead and close off the round one voting, and we will get a we'll get a winner show up here in chat shortly when that happens, and then we'll begin round two voting. It looks like um, W was the winner with the most votes in the first round. So congratulations to Team Tarvalon Witches. Now uh, let's <laughs> let's start round two voting. If you believe that um, it was the right or wrong decision, or would be the right or wrong decision to make changes to Rand's relationship with Min, Avienda, and Elaine, then let's vote for round two here. Again, this is uh, you'll Taylor will throw that vote into the into the chat here, and that'll show up shortly. And you will do um, exclamation point vote space. And I think you'll do uh, N for Nerbless, and that was Lesbi Ar uh, Lesbi Nerdy's arguments. And then you do uh, exclamation point vote uh, W for Tarvalon Witches, and that was Jess's argument. And voting is now open, and you can begin to do that. So we'll let the votes go. Really compelling arguments. Um, <laughs> like I said, hashtag polygamy with benefits and uh, two times a bang, and I don't know. <laughs> I feel like we can just end the show now. That was good. <laughs> we crushed it. <laughs> Yep. If you if, if you're Keep still watching if you're still watching us over on Twitter and Facebook, I hope you enjoyed this sneak peek into our debate. Come watch the rest of this debate. We have three more questions and come vote with us. 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, enjoy this. And for those of you, like I said, on Twitter and Facebook, this will be the end of the evening for you. I'm loving seeing the votes go up and down. It's kind of hard. I, I, by the way, if you're not watching chat to my participants here, you, there was a lot of con. There, people were conflicted after that second round. Uh, so I'm really interested to see what the votes turn up here. But we're not going to close the voting for round two until after we are done discussing round three. So let us move on to round three. The participants in this one, this one has to do with uh, Wheel of Time characters. And the participants in this debate are going to be for Team Nerbless, Les Be Nerdy. And for Team uh, Tarvalon Witches, it's going to be Rakapa Sedai. So this question and topic goes like this. Fans openly speculate, considering no official announcement of the royal family of Andor has been made, that we may not see the Trakans in Season 1. So, to both of you, if only one member of the royal family, or their entourage, let's say, Elida, whom we meet in the eye of the world were to be included in season one of The Wheel of Time on Amazon Prime, who would be the best choice and why? And Lesby Nerdy, let's begin with your choice. Okay, well, um, I think that Elida would be the best choice to introduce in season one, because Elida is a significant antagonist in the show, but uh, we don't really know that until later. And I mean, everyone knows that having a good villain, interesting bad guys makes the story better. And Elida is, is that in spades. She is a bad guy who doesn't know that she's a bad guy. She has a horrible personality, but the best of intentions. She has these magical foretellings, so she should know the future, but she is always misinterpreting her own foretellings. She completely fails as an Armorlin, but with, without her, we wouldn't have Egwene completely kicking ass and taking names as the Armorlin. Uh, she also kind of, sort of, is the first Armorlin to start rooting out the Black Aja. She's just an incredibly fascinating character, and introducing her early as an ambiguous character gives us more time to get to know her. Her story takes twists and turns, whereas, say, Elaine, for example, her story is fairly straightforward. She has a steady and clear arc. We don't need to see her early on because there is just not this level of complexity to her story. Elida, on the other hand, we see her go to like great heights and then and fall to, you know, the lowest lows. It's an exciting arc to follow. And so I think this would only be enhanced from seeing it early on. I also think that she is the easiest of the Camelin group to introduce early. And I said, I does not have to be in the palace. Rand was out and about in Camelin to see Loghain. And it would be natural for Elida, a member of the Red Aja, to be out in the city at that time. It would be very easy to arrange a meeting with him and Elida without involving the rest of the palace crew at all. And that's my argument. Excellent. My time. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate that, Ms. Mirdi. And so your choice was Elida. So uh, I'll turn it over to Rakapa. Who it would be your choice in this case? Thank you. Um, those are some excellent points. And I do think um, it would be fun to see Elida, but I'll say first that we're getting Leandrin in season one. And I am okay giving up on giving up what Elida does in book one in season one because to me it's a letdown moment. Elida's prophecy with Rand, her foretelling. It's like it's nothing we don't know, nothing we're not gonna know in the next book. It almost gives things away and like dumbs them down. So I'm okay giving that up. And I also think oh, I'm sorry, I didn't give you my answer though. Gareth yeah. Bryn. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. We need Gareth Bryn. Um we don't need to see more of the Trakans, like Lesby said. There's no reason to give us more of them. We have plenty of all of them. But Gareth Brynn is a character who becomes important later on, who we actually do need to establish early. I would love to see so much an establishment of who Gareth is and what he's going to mean to the series in the first season. That would be awesome. That would actually help his arc. Elida, we don't really need her, and I'm okay letting her go. Gareth Brynn is someone who actually we could use more of at the beginning of the story. So my answer is 100% Gareth Bryn, not the Trikans. I'm okay losing Elida, we need more Gareth. Also, we're getting Swan, so let's put both of those in the season at the same time. Let's start to establish who they are and how they'll fit together. Okay, I love it. I my time. Am I going really short? Should I keep talking? <laughs> you can use as much, <laughs> you can no, use Gareth, as much time. All day. <laughs> more Gareth. Everyone loves Gareth Bryn. All the, I mean, like, you know it, you know it's right. Now okay. I yield my time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on to the rebuttals. Uh, Lesbian Nerdy, why is Gareth Bryn the wrong answer when it comes to choosing one of these individuals to be in season one? 
Okay. This first of all, I I could watch Recapit talk all day. It just makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, I. My issue with introducing Gareth Brynn in season one, I'm not quite sure what he would do. I don't see a natural way to introduce him into the story, to have him interact with our main crew. It, it seems extraneous to me. Um, he's a palace guard and unless, or he's a, what is he, a queen's guard? So unless uh, Rand or some of our crew are somehow in interacting with the palace, I don't see a reason to have him there. And if they're interacting with the palace, then there might as well be everyone there. So I extra extrapolating or extracting him from that crew does not seem feasible or natural to me. And uh, there, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, excellent. So uh, back to you, Rakapa. What's your rebuttal to that those comments and to maybe even the choice of Elida? Sure. Well, it's a little hard to speak to this without knowing what they're going to do. But for any battle that we might see in season one, I would love to see Gareth Brynn in it. I would love to see us start to establish the great generals. I think it would be so cool if by the time we get to the last battle, we have, since book one, started to see these skills. I don't think we really get to see that until Egwene becomes Omerlin with Gareth. And even then, it's a lot of waiting. I think it would be much more rewarding in the last battle if these are characters who we have been setting up as great generals. And it's an opportunity to do that season one because he is there. We are seeing there are there are places they could put him in. I would argue that I think there are battles he could lead. They might add battles. We don't know. But I think seeing his skills and what he's going to bring to the table later would be super cool. Yeah, this is a, it, what an interesting, I, I, I would never have thought of Gareth Brynn. So I, what a fascinating, I can see in chat, people are kind of curious, like, they, I don't think a lot of people thought that. And now that I feel like you have some support for this idea. So I'm kind of curious, let's bring everybody back in. Thank you both for uh, your, your, your comments. Let's bring your teammates back in and let's see what they have to say about the people that you picked for their, for their team. So yeah, why don't we start, uh, we'll go with, uh, Jess, why don't you give us uh, a reason why you believe that Recap is correct, that Gareth Brynn as a, you know, one of the great captains would be the person to include if they had to pick somebody? Um, I think it makes sense because he is involved with the royal family who we are going to see sooner rather than later, even if we don't see them right away. And um, I would really love to see his storyline expanded. And also Gareth Brynn is daddy. And I just want more of that. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay. Daddy or Zeddy? Uh, uh, nice, uh, nice. No, it depends Nablis. on how well he he does on screen. If he's going to be Daddy or Zeddy. I feel like I feel like I didn't make a rule about bringing additional props in, but I guess uh, it's okay if we have a disembodied head, we, we can have Nablus in a wig. So Nablus, what is uh, what is your commentary here? Why is the correct answer Elida? Well, I, I I think they're both good choices, but really Elida is the only one that really makes sense. Uh, Gareth Brynn, if you have to choose between which of them adds more to the story starting early on, it's clearly Elida. I mean, there's no question. Her foretelling, her warnings about Rand, and then later we have to set her up being in the second book, in the third book. We have to have a lot of setup for her to become the Omerlin. So Gareth Brynn doesn't really have any bearing on the story till much later on. It doesn't make sense to add it. Okay. Um, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone for your comments. Uh, this is an this is gonna be an interesting one. I don't know how the voting is gonna go in this one, but let's end round two voting. So Taylor, want to give us the answer? Who won the last round of voting? Let's see how that shows up here in chat. I, I don't know honestly. <laughs> these last two rounds, uh, I'm curious. Like I said, Gareth Brynn, I was not expecting uh, either in this. Um, and was that immediate? I'm kind of curious. While we wait for the uh, round two voting to show up here. Um, uh, Rakapa, was was this person was Gareth like the one you picked immediately when you knew this question was coming? Was that or did you spend a lot of time kind of thinking that through? You know, when you look at the other characters, I don't. When you look at the Trakans especially, I don't really see a reason to put any of them there, and certainly not one over the other. Whereas Gareth is like he has a separate storyline, and it's one that I actually want more of. I don't want any more Trakans. I'm, I'm fine with us gotcha. not seeing them until later seasons. So. Yeah. I, yeah, Gareth is of that mix, the one who I want to see more of. Yeah, fantastic. No, it's a, yeah, like I said, wasn't where I kind of expected you to go. So that's, yeah, great. I love the answer. By the way, the winners of round two were Team Nerbless. So we have uh, each team has taken one of these rounds. Let's begin 
voting on the most recent round. So round three voting will begin here shortly. Taylor will add that. And like I said, if you're watching us and want to take part in voting, you have to be here in YouTube chat. And the way you vote here is exclamation point vote space, and then the letter N for team Nerblus or the letter W. So in this case, it's team N if you thought Elida was the right answer, or it's team W if you thought that Gareth Brynn was the right answer. So again, exclamation point vote space N or W, and that voting will remain open until the end of our next round. So let's jump to our fourth round here. Uh, this has been a lot of fun so far. Uh, so uh, this is also a part of Wheel of Time characters category. And for this one, for Team Nerblis, we have Nablus speaking to us again. And for Team Tarvalon Witches, we have Jess speaking to us. And this was the question they were posed. Rafe has claimed when it comes to combining characters, maybe sometimes a minor character folded into more a more major one to make better use of our cast but nothing nutso. Within the context of season one, considering characters from the Eye of the World and the Great Hunt and the Dragon Reborn, what is the best combination of a minor character folded into a major character and why? And we'll begin with you, Nablus. Why, what is that uh, for you? You're muted yet, I think still, Nablus thought a lot about this and I, I really think that the answer here is Valda and Cardin, Jake and Cardin as White Cloaks. Mm. And here's, the, I would not normally have gone there, but we know that Eamon Valda is going to be in the first season, although he doesn't appear in the books. Okay. And so it leads me to believe there's obviously a narrative reason they want to put him in the story. Um, I don't think having too many White Cloak bad guys like Valda becomes a bad guy later, right? I think we could put him in the role of Boars. We could put him in the role that Cardin plays and have that still make narrative sense. And so I think there's a lot of being able to roll those two characters together without a lot of change to the story. Um, we could set Valda up as a bad guy and then them showing the Dark Friend social, if we get to see that, and then have it be revealed that Valda, who we had previously thought as this White Cloak, is a Dark Friend would be a really impactful TV moment. That could be a cliffhanger. That could be a... And so I think rolling those two characters together makes a ton of sense. Probably more so than any anyone else out there uh, that I can think of in the first two seasons. Um, you know, and additionally, too, you always want to think the long game. Like, you, you do have to think about seasons down the road, right? And um, is there anything that Cardin does... Jake and Cardin does that we couldn't have Valda do, right? The only thing would be die, but I don't think that that has to be a part of the story, right? Like, I, I think they could really do a lot with Eamon Valda if we know he's a dark friend at the head of a White Cloak army. It just adds, I think, a lot to the story, and it'll be a lot more impactful much later on when Galad kills him. So I think that Valda and, um, Valda and, and Jake and Cardin would be it. I yield my time. My yeah. crop. I was kind of curious. This one, I was I was looking forward to this one because it's such an open question. And what a, yeah, that, a very uh, interesting answer there. Now let me turn over uh, your two minutes to you, Jess. What was your answer to this question? Well, this was really hard because I can't remember shit ever. So um, <laughs> <laughs> luckily, Rekava came to the rescue with this a little bit. So um, what I'm thinking is if we take the Red Sisters who later in the tower are the ones who gentle Loghain and roll that actually into Elida. So here's what I'm thinking. <laughs> we see Loghain go to the palace in Camelin. He's before more gaze. Elida has her foretelling, the one that she has in front of Rand, but she has it with Loghain. And because she misinterprets everything, she thinks Loghain is the dragon reborn, gentles his ass right there, extra judiciously, just like, boom, done. And it's just like drama, 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 freaking Elida being a dick, which, you know, typical. And <laughs> it would be, I think, just really dynamic and it would it would show us the whole process of gentling without having to take and put us someplace else before we actually get there because Log Loghain gets gentled at the tower before we ever see it. So 
that's my idea. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. The, again, I knew this was it, it's such an open book of what you can choose here. Um, yeah, inter- interesting idea. So back to you, Nablus. Why is this not the best choice or why is it the wrong choice to you? Well, I'm not, and I think that's a decent, I think it's a good answer. I'm not sure entirely who would be rolling in. Like if you're referring to the, you know, what they call like the, in the past where Red Sisters just gentled people on the spot, right? That was considered the vileness, I think is what they call it in the books. Um, like I, I think if, if Elida did that without the trial, there's no way she becomes Omerlin. She doesn't break the law she would be imprisoned for it. Like a lot of Red Sisters went into exile. So I don't think that situation, while it might be cool, I don't think that that would make sense in the narrative of the story to have Elida become, as you put it, as a dick and just gentle Loghain on the spot, as cool as it might be. Um, I just don't feel like it fits the story and it would be too big of a change. Like if they're going to if they're gonna make changes, they have to be easy ones that fit into the story. And I just feel like Cardin makes the most sense. Cardin and Balba. Okay. Uh, thank you. And Jess, your rebuttal to that. Uh... Um, I like the idea of combining the White Cloaks because if you were White Cloaks, we have to deal with the better. But okay, so point taken on the whole Elida going to jail thing. So she goes and she does it in secret where nobody can see. Boom, he he burnt himself out. How convenient. You know, there, there are ways to arrange the story to make it so that this would fit. You know, you could also make it so that, you know, Elida has a sufficient amount of power that, you know, the other sisters who are there aren't going to say anything. They're not going to rat her out. I mean, there there are ways that you can tweak it to make it so that she gets away with this with without, uh, you know, justice ultimately being served. So point taken, but ha, no. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Thank you both for those. Uh, yeah. And I'm kind of curious. I saw some ideas. <laughs> I like it was like in chat. I saw Machin Shin and Mashadar. That was funny. Um, <laughs> so uh, let's bring Al, your teammates back into this conversation and hear what they have to say about your ideas. I'm, I'm curious. Uh, and maybe let's begin with you, Rakapa. Uh, Jess just made the case about kind of almost rolling in um, some of the Red Sisters into Elida and having this interaction with Loghain. Uh, why is this the right answer as far as um, subsuming a minor character in a major role? Yes, well put, Mother. All of it. I love it. And I, this idea is so exciting because Elida's foretelling with Rand is such a nothing moment to me. It's like, there will be chaos and this man will be at the center of it. It's like, duh. And so imagine for a second that it's Loghain and she's saying chaos, this man at the center of it. And they gentle him. It doesn't have to be on the spot. They could take him to the tower and do it. That would be fabulous. We could actually make something out of this Elida foretelling instead of wasting it on Rand where we're just spoiling what Thank you, Rakap. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, interesting. Uh, I, I see <laughs> Nablus doesn't agree. <laughs> so let's go uh, with 30 seconds for Lesbian Nerdy. Why did Nablus make the right choice here about Jack and Carden and uh, Valda? Well, first of all, I do want to say that the White Tower Witch's argument actually supports my argument for the last uh, point. So if you have the ally to do that, it means that she has to be the person that's in the first season. But also <laughs> I think that Cardin and uh, Valda would make a good combination because uh, Valda does some pretty dark friendly things. And so it makes sense to have him be a dark friend. I mean, he flat out assaults someone. And so having him be proven to be fully really evil Thank you, Jen, very much for your answer. Uh, uh, the uh, this, this was a really interesting one. I love the hat that Rakaba just put on. So uh, yeah, now is time for us. Uh, thank you all for your arguments. Let's have Taylor show us the results of the last round of voting. We should see now the who won round three, and that should show up here shortly in chat. Uh, as far as this round's concerned, were there other ones? I'm kind of curious, uh, and I want to go to you, uh, uh, lesbian nerdy, was was there like someone else that you were thinking about when you first saw this question um, instead of the one that uh, Nablus chose? Yeah, the one uh, I was thinking of was Cajun Nile and oh god, who was it? Who was it, Nablus? Cajun Nile and I can't remember. <laughs> you had Cajun uh, Nile and uh, Jeff from Bornholt. Jeff from Bol- Bornholt. Jeff from Bornholt. Cajun Nile and Jeff from Bornholt. Uh, because like they're both good military leaders. They're both uh, you know 
very skilled leaders, but Pedro Nile, most of his scheming is done internally in his head. So we don't, like, it's very actually hard to show that on screen. So if you had him being an actual military leader, you could naturally put him in settings where he is talking to people. So you get to see his intelligence without him having to like narrate his schemes while he's alone in a room or something like that, like, or sure. seeing him write down his plans. Like that's yep. boring to watch. So if you could put him in a scene with somebody, that would be um, interesting. Real yeah. quick, Matt, I, yeah. I, this has nothing to do with the debate. I just okay. have to ask Rakapa this question. Um, Rakapa, what is a pirate's favorite city in the Wheel of Time? Okay, are answer. you muted? I don't know if Rakapa's muted. You're muted, Rakapa. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, uh, it do be bear long. <laughs> nope, it's Tarvalin. Oh, that's good. I was going to say Ebudar. Ebudar. Yes, yeah, Ebudar, sir. Ebudar <laughs> is the second favorite. Anyone favorite. just listening to this right now and not seeing this, it's Rakapa's wearing this wonderful uh, pirate hat. <laughs> that's what this question came about. So, I just uh, want to point out, I can't yeah. do a costume change. This is really mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you were watching chat here, you know that Team Nerbless won round three with 69% of the vote. So it's Team Nerbless two rounds and Team Tarvalon Witches one round. So now we will begin voting on this this last round four that you just heard between the two answers of Jackim Card and Valda and the Red Aja being subsumed um, into Elida in the sense of those who were basically taking and gentling uh, Loghain. So that will show up here. Taylor will put that round of voting here shortly in chat. And like I said, you'll see that. And then you use exclamation point vote space N for team Nerbless or space W for team Tarvalon Witches. And this brings us to, don't do it just yet. I haven't seen it. I know everyone started voting there. Taylor, did you start voting? Oh, is it already? Oh, there we go. It's already in. It's now it's in. So uh, great. Everyone's voting. Excellent. Appreciate that. Thank you very much for uh, jumping in and voting on this. This has been a lot of fun so far. Now we are down to our last round. Uh, and this is round five. Basically, uh, this is this upcoming one's round five right here, Taylor. And, and this one is going to, depending on how the voting goes, be the tiebreaker. But regardless, we're going to have fun and we're going to go ahead and do this. Uh, so round five, let's move on to that. Our two participants from Team Nerbless and Team Tarvalon Witches. From Team Nerbless, it's Nablus again. And from Team Tarvalon Witches, I believe it's Jess again. So it's our same. Uh, and uh, you guys can tell me if we're wrong about that, but I think those are the two choices that we made. So the topic for our last round also happens to be Wheel of Time characters. And it also comes from something that we were told from Rafe. In fact, we were told that an Aiel, not including Rand, will show up in season one and that we will be shocked. So I want to ask you both, and we'll start with Jess this time, name your choice and explain why yours would be the best Aiel and the most shocking to include in season one of The Wheel of Time on Amazon Prime. I am so glad that you asked this question because I have got this wing ding theory and I cannot wait to tell it to you. So, okay. The Aiel who's going to show up in season one Nakomi, let me tell you why. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and uh, yeah, let's let's hear and let's hear why. <laughs> okay, so uh, get this. Nakomi is actually Tigraine. Tigraine does not actually die. She is near death, but she doesn't die. Somebody comes, takes care of her. I don't care how it happens. They can figure that out later. But she lives, hauls her wounded ass back to the waste, and like goes fucking hermit living on her own doing like her mysterious desert woman thing and that's that's what's going to happen that's my theory nakomi is tigraine i have thought this for a really for a really really long time nakomi is Rand's mom got it and we're going to see her in season one when they do the whole dragon mount thing we're going to see tam finding rand we're going to see this woman who looks like she's dead somebody takes care of her whatever She's Nakomi. Okay. Trust. Well, <laughs> trust. I love it. Um, okay. Yeah. I, I honestly, I've, I've heard that theory before, and that would be a very, I'll say this, that would be shocking um, for sure. 
uh, and somebody that we didn't expect to see. So uh, you have two minutes now, Nablus. Uh, it looked like when you reacted to that, uh, her choice, that maybe you were thinking that. So, but who is the choice you would like to make for the IEL that will show up and shock us in season one? So Jess managed to take both of my choices in one shot there. Um, <laughs> the reality is, is I actually don't think Nakomi will will be it. I don't think that would make a ton of narrative sense. Uh, I think that would be shocking. Like, there's really only two Aiel that could be shocking. Like, if Avienda showed up, who cares, right? We know that she's scouting around. It would just be showing up a season early. The only ones that really make sense would be Rand's mom, so Tigraine, or Nakomi would be shocking. Now, the only reason Nakomi would make any sense is if it was for the shock factor. And they want to set up this sort of like mystical thing. I don't think there's any way that Nakomi and Tigraine are the same person. I think the odds are here that what we're really going to see is Tigraine. And we're going to see a flashback to Ran being born. We're going to see a flashback episode, in my opinion, for Moraine and Swan and the start of their journey. And I think we're going to see some of New Spring. And in that process, we're definitely going to get a Ran being born meeting t grain um, so who is well, who is your answer then so t grain is my answer i don't think it's going to be nakomi i, see. I, see. Um, I was okay. mad because that was my second choice uh if we had to choose a shocking one but the reality is is that only makes sense if you're trying to be shocking the answer is really t grain i think that's the only one that makes sense it would be shocking and it makes narrative sense okay so uh, what an interesting two choices so i want to hear rebuttals here uh, I'm not sure how this is going to work for rebuttals, but let me go to Jess. What's your rebuttal that it uh, would not be Tigrain, but it is Tigrain? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure how to tell you. Um, how you well, this my one. rebuttal would be that it would be Tigrain, but she did in fact die. And I choose to believe that she doesn't. Um, but let me say this. What about, because... Was it Rand's dad who ran off to fight the shadow? After who was it? Was it his uncle, well, Lance's uncle, something? The, what yeah, about there's him? A, there's a mix. There's a mix there. Yeah. <laughs> what about not him? <laughs> not but yeah, not Aiel. Yeah. One of them was though. Anyway, I was thinking about that, and I thought that that would be cool to see in the first season. Yeah, because I don't really have a rebuttal. <laughs> I mean, I'll go to I'll get it. I mean, you've already kind of made your point there. Do you have anything else to say, um, Nablus, about this? Yeah, um, yeah. Go ahead. You have a so I'm I'm more going to respond to the chat here because a lot of people are saying T Grain is not an Aiel, and she was not born Aiel, but T Grain was adopted. T Grain was a maiden of the spear, uh, so she was adopted as Aiel. She is Aiel, uh, whether she was born with them or not. Cult she is culturally Aiel. So, uh, welcome to school. She was a maiden of the spear. Yes, and married a clan chief. Well, was the consort of a man, clan chief, and had his kid, which was Ram. So, yeah, I, I think that the answer here is that it's going to be Tigrain, as uh, I forget her Aiel name, but it was Maiden of the Spear. She was pregnant, went anyway uh, to the Aiel War, gave birth on Dragon Mount. I think that's the flashback that makes sense, and it's not an Aiel that we expected to see. I think it's pretty clear cut. <laughs> uh, what I love is that. That you guys, you, you squeaked under the line a little bit for the rules here. They, I guess that you are talking about two different people, um, even though uh, uh, you're thinking that one of them might have been the other person. So let's bring in your teammates and see if they have any final thoughts on this question and controversy between these two characters. Um, and yeah, I, I, I wasn't expecting a Nakomi to grain moment here. So again, I, these were going to always, these last three questions were always going to be fun because it was going to be, <laughs> really curious what you came up, came up with. So let's go to you first, uh, Rakapa. Um, when it comes to Nakomi, why is Nakomi the right answer here as far as the shocking Aiel? Nakomi is 100% the right answer because first of all, I love this theory that Mother brought up. But even if you don't think Tigrain and Nakomi are the same person, regardless, Nakomi is the correct answer because there's no other Aiel that would be shocking. There's no other Aiel that would be shocking to see. Like. Even to Grain, that's not shocking. I don't think that would be crazy to see a flashback of to Grain. So when Rafe said this, like it has to be someone shocking. Nakomi's the only one who would actually be shocking. And it would be cool to see her at the beginning and then at the end. <laughs> 
Uh, thank you very much, Rakafa. Appreciate it. Uh, yes, uh, and to that, uh, final thoughts from you, Lesbian Radio, on this last round, last vote. Well, I think it would be very difficult to have Nakomi be at the beginning and at the end just for logistics of a show. You have to hire the same actor for season one as in the final season. That is just logistically difficult. And to Grain, just as Nabla said, it makes sense. We know there's going to be flashbacks. We've seen a young swan being cast. We've heard of uh, characters from New Spring. I think the prophecy is going to be shown. And when they show the prophecy, it would make sense to flash to Dragon Mount, show the birth. And to Grain is there. Makes Okay, there we go. That is it. The end of round five. Thank you so much for uh, for actually bringing this to the table. This has been a lot of fun. Let's let's see um, from a round. I, and someone brought this up in chat, and I saw that we ended round four voting, but we're not going to show that if it's possible. Taylor, yeah. can we can we have round five voting begin now? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to try to have round five voting go on. I'll talk to my participants here. You'll have you'll have a couple minutes to vote oh. here. We can't do that apparently. So we were, we, were, we were hoping we could and not show the winner of round four, but let's do it anyway, um, just the way the system works. So you'll see the winner of round four and then we'll begin round five voting. Uh, that was gonna be, that was really nice if we could have figured that out maybe next time during the second debate. So uh, Team Nerbless uh, won that last round, round four in a much smaller margin than the previous one. So, but with 62% of the vote, let's throw round five voting in for, um, <laughs> No, don't vote just yet. Everybody, they, everybody started jumping as they saw round four voting end. Um, so stop voting. <laughs> They'll hear me in like 15 <laughs> seconds. Uh, so go ahead and add round five. Uh, While we're waiting for everybody to vote, this is important. Uh, both <laughs> Jess and Rakappa both claim to be Aes Sedai, but I, everybody's been talking about the fact that they're Black Aja. Um, and so <laughs> I don't think you can trust anything they say. They're clearly Black Aja. Okay. Just complimented me so, on my dress, and as you can clearly see, I'm sad. not the only one. I, I like sad. the by the way, I like the vote of state. So you can now vote. You probably saw this already in chat, so you're hearing me say this 15 seconds later. But now, please do vote for that last round. Again, it's you're voting between Nakomi or Tigrain, or something in between there. I saw some abstaining of votes. I'm seeing lots of W, lots of Ns here. It'll be interesting to see who takes this fifth round. Um, which one of these questions, I'm kind of curious, Jess, um, of, of the five questions, which was your favorite to have uh, been able to at least answer for the show? Um, I think my favorite one, well, I really liked getting up on my soapbox about the treatment of female characters in literature in the first one. Sure. Because I like that. Um, but I actually, I my wingding theory about to grade being <laughs> Nakomi is it's my baby. And I was really excited to bust that out. So that was probably my favorite one. Yeah. I can tell that you're I, I'm so mad at you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I kind of wondered if we'd like, have I, uh, that. That was the one question. Where I, was I like, didn't even think about options. it technically being two people. That was kind of a dick move on my part. <laughs> <I knew> it <laughs> that was so great. And then I loved it. Cause it was funny about a minute into your answer. Uh, Nablus, I was like, is he going to answer the question or what? You know, because like, in my head, I kept on saying, like, Nakomi is to grain. Nakomi is to grain. So I love that you had snuck that in with, like, well, it's to grain, but not Nakomi. Um, so that was good. <laughs> Taylor, you want to give us the answer of the winner of round five for posterity? Let's see who, who won round five. And that'll show up here uh, shortly in chat. And then we'll... Uh, and then we'll, we'll, we'll close up this debate. Uh, I hope those of you that have watched have enjoyed uh, having this. We're, this is the first one we've done. We will do this again. And uh, we will uh, continue to reach out. Thank you, Twitter of Time, for actually voting in these four participants. You're, you're wonderful. Oh, Team Nerbless barely pulled that one off uh, with 56% of the vote. It was a close one. I love, uh, I love hashtag Takomi. That's, that's, yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> and and I hashtag love it. polygamy with benefits. That one is going to Now that we've actually me. established and, and we won, I can actually say that I agree that it could be Nakomi. Um, <laughs> voting is closed. Since I the think that's closed, an yeah. awesome theory. I really do think it's an awesome theory. And it would be really, they'd have to play Nakomi out a little differently than they do in yeah. the books. But I think they could set Nakomi up as like a. I don't want to. I don't want to think like a spirit guide character. I don't want to set it up like in that kind of like ethereal way. But like, I definitely think that there could be some type of um, 
I think you could set Nakomi up as this character because again, I made a video on Nakomi being po potentially a previous version of the dragon. Like, there's a lot of theories about what and who Nakomi is, and I feel like they could expand on that in the show. So, whatever they do here, that could be the surprise, and it would make sense. Yeah. It, we just, in us as Wheel of Time fans, we wouldn't even know where the heck they're going with it. Exactly, it's something for us to speculate on as well. Like we, you know, those of us who know everything. Yeah, right. that would be that would be a nice little that'd be a nice little treat, a little yeah. nugget. I love Rakappa's uh, costume changes. <laughs> so, yes. fantastic. so yeah, hopefully you all enjoyed that. I saw some ideas about doing a town hall style. Absolutely. We'll continue to iterate on this. We'll have fun with this. We'll have one where we just have participants, um, you know, that have even neither been, never been on the show or just fans, or we'll do, like I said, yeah, a town hall version of this where those of you in chat get to ask questions in the moment or call in with a question and we'll have people in the moment of answer those questions about the books themselves. We'll jump in back and forth between the books and uh, the TV show. This has been a lot of fun. You can catch us all afterwards here in, well, for those of you that will make the after show in chat in Discord. Uh, we like to hang out afterwards. Go check that out. That link is in the description below. You'll find that. And also, if you're here for the first time or you've never subscribed, I hope you enjoyed this and hope you'll give our, our channel a chance and subscribe. And yes, uh, if you want to see Taylor host the Dusty Wheel Show, yes. help us get to 10,000 subscribers. We're almost there. I can't wait. Honestly, you guys don't even get it. He's already done his intro pitch to me. I died in the floor laughing uh, because it was all about, well, I won't tell you. Uh, but yeah, I can't wait to be his guest when that happens. And be back here next Watt Wednesday. We'll have another show. We'll announce that this weekend. Until we see you there, and thank you all for showing up and being part of this. Good night from the Dusty Wheel. And as we say around here, smash to black. If you want news and rumors that appeal, welcome to the Dusty Wheel.